Hello, everybody. This is Julie D from NordoniaHills.News, and I have a new business to let you know about. Well, maybe not brand new, but I bet you don't know. Um, Ella from Underground Yoga. I want to welcome you and welcome everybody. Thank you very much, Julie. You are welcome. So tell everyone what you do and how it all got started. Uh, well, my name is Ella Arietta. And uh, I am a meditation and yoga teacher. Um, and I own a small, intimate private space studio out here in Northfield. Um, and it's, I, I like to call myself like a hidden gem um, in, in the Rolling Brook development. Um, yeah, so that's is where that, I am. Is that Norfolk Village or Norfolk Center? That's a good question. So I think it's, Northfield Center. So we're in, if I'm, I'm in the Rolling Brook development, so that might be Northfield Center. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Did you have to contact the trustees to get started? No, I'm, okay. I run this from, from home. So oh, okay. No, it's not, yeah, so. Okay. A lot of people run their small businesses from home. Yes. Well, I think you're allowed to do that in Northfield Center, yeah. but other communities, maybe not so much. So you're, you're lucky. Um, so what made you start it though? You know, what, what made you say, I'm going to do this? Um, you know, that's a really great question and, um, thank you for asking me. So when I was much younger, I was a, I was a child, I was diagnosed with epilepsy and it started to, it started to get worse with age. Um, and as I moved out to, because originally fr I'm from New York, Brooklyn, New York, and when I moved out to uh, Ohio, when I moved out to Cleveland, I took um, I took a yoga class, and um, I really felt the benefits to it, uh, the, sh the stress, and I really I really began to see the side effects really fast because I'm on a lot of medication. So I took my first class and I told my husband that I think I'm gonna go back just to see what it's like again. And I enjoyed it. And um, not only that, but I began to see, as I kept going, I began to see seizures that I used to get. I'd see less and less and less of them, but I was still taking medication, but I would really see a lot more, a lot less of the seizures. Wow, that's yeah. a, I'm, that's really a great testimony to yoga. Yeah, really, it is. So that's my, that's my biggest thing. I was really looking for an alternative path. So um, I think that after so many years of being on so many, on so much medication, um, I said, I have to do something. And I didn't know where to really look for. I had no, I really didn't know much about yoga. Um, and I, when I first took my class, I remember, I remember coming home, I was very tired. And I, you know, I, I was thinking to myself, well, you know, it's just a, it's probably like a cardio workout. Right. Um, but what I didn't know, there is another, there's another side of it. There's a healing side to it and I'm still on medication. There's, um, I've always been on medication. My doctors never took me off medication. So yoga is yoga just helps me release, relieve my stress. Uh, with the physical practice and the um, mental practice of it, um, you know, because the side effects of medication and the side effects of the disease itself is horrible. It's just horrific. And my heart goes out to those who still who suffer with the disease and their side effects are worse than mine. So mm -hmm. I completely understand where they're coming from. Um, so, yeah, when I, you know, when I first started practicing yoga, uh, I was really looking for a holistic way to heal and uh, internally and externally. Wow. Um, yeah. So that was for me, that was great because when I, when I was in high school, I, um, I studied dance. So I've always, the, that dance always interested me. I took dance as a child. My parents always took me to dance class. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've always loved it. And I think that being limber always kind of came naturally to me. So it was to no, it was no surprise when I started practicing that, you know, cause 
you don't have to be flexible to practice yoga, but um, it did come naturally to me, the flexibility. But again, you don't have to be flexible to practice yoga. Right. Well, I'm sure it helps when you're an instructor. <laughs> well, yeah, but, you know, I think that, <clears throat> to be honest with you, I think that a lot of people get intimidated um, because when they see all these YouTube videos and they see, you know, they see everybody practicing or the, um, the um, Instagram posts and pictures, they see all of these people and models and teachers and they're, they, they post these pictures of them doing these arm balances and, you know, just all of these things. I'm, people must be thinking, oh my God, this is what yoga is all about. It's right. not. It's, it's not what it's all about. There's more to it. Yoga is such a vast subject and it's such an amazing subject. And it's one of the reasons why I came, why I came to love it. Uh, I just didn't know so I just didn't know a lot about it until after I decided, Hey, you know what? I think that I want to do this. You know, I think this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this a lifelong profession for myself. So yeah. Well, that's great. Did you have any other jobs before this? I did. Um, as a matter, and this all leads to this is all going to lead up to that. So, I was um, I was in retail for a couple of years prior to to yoga, and um, it was a real stressful job. So, I worked for for designers out in um, in New York, and when I came to to Ohio. I worked for one of the big retail stores and I worked for Saks. So it was just these, these, you know, retail is not a joke. So if you, if you know anything about retail uh, and you know anything about, you know, just people in general who want their stuff like yesterday, um, especially yes. when it comes down to clothing um, or anything it's it's hard because you know you're working all these hours uh you have to work overtime and then you have inventory and you know especially if you're trying to start a family or if you have a family it's hard these you know these these hours they they get they get a little crazy so it's not something that i wanted to do for 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 in the long run so i i, I was looking actually this came i'm glad yoga came when it came because I was also looking for a transition in my life. And when yoga came, I said, hey, this is, this is, this not only helps me stressfully to, to de-stress, but it also helps in other ways. So yeah, it was a perfect management for what I was looking for. Wow. I, I had no idea retail was so stressful. They were stressing me out just listening to all that. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, it was rough. So I'm just, I'm glad that yoga came along when it did. Um, because it was just, it was, it was, a, it was, it's a stressful environment to be in, especially clothing retail. It's, it's not an easy environment to be in. So yeah, I'm happy where I am right now <laughs> and I intend to stay here. <laughs> well, that's good. So, you know, going back to so you, you're from New York, um, yes. going back to when you were in high school, what, what did you want to be when you grew up when you were, you know, like in high school? So I think that goes back to dancing. So um, when I was in high school, I actually took dance and I figured, oh, you know what, this is this, I love this so much and who knows where this is going to escalate to, right? So um, I figured that it maybe after I finish after I finish high school, maybe I'll get there, you know, maybe I'll just take dance up as you know, as, after high school. Um, but unfortunately, it didn't end up, <laughs> it didn't end up that way. Uh, but I did take up dance into my adulthood, because it also did release stress and, you know, anxiety, um, very much like yoga, but there are different, different ways that yoga helps release stress and anxiety levels and you know all the good stuff really I always um well lately I've been asking that question because I feel like there's always kids in high school really worried about I don't know what I want to do and how can I pick my life's 
you know, profession right now. And I don't even know what I like. And yeah. my message to all the, the kids going through that is just pick the next thing. It doesn't have to be like your forever thing because yeah. it's a life's a journey. And um, so, you know, go into what you, what you feel is the next step for you, but it's maybe not where you're end, going to be end up when you're like grown up, so to speak. Right. Yeah, I agree. I, I just, I think that there's just so much pressure as to what you have to be when you, or when you're a senior, yes. you know, when you, it's like, okay, well, you have to hurry up and make your decision yes, because you've got a couple of months left or people, or I, what I notice parents doing, and um, I noticed that, okay, you're a junior now, uh, you have another year before, you know, you really start applying for colleges. And I think they, they start doing that earlier now. They start thinking about that as they're um, probably sophomores as early as being a sophomore. So I think there's a lot of pressure, you know, so not, not only adults, but I think that high schoolers are under a lot of pressure just as well. So, and you know, there's so many professions now that you don't even need to go to college. I mean, I love college. I went to college. Um, but depending on what you want to do, that's not, you don't always have to take that track. And I think parents are just automatically thinking college. You yes. know, but church trade schools and I mean, I have trade schools right now need people desperately yeah. um, and, you know, college isn't for everybody. So I think there's a lot of options. I think people look, need to look at more options, but also just take the next step and not, you know, take a step that it's easy. Like if you're going to go to college, take some broad classes so you can, you know, pick around and see what you want to do. I guess that's one thing nice about college. If you have no idea just start somewhere and you can take a bunch of classes and find out what's going on in the world. So it is, yeah. it is a very pivotal time in your life basically. Um, but I, I want, you know, students to know that there's um, you know, don't stress so much about it because it's just the next step. It's not your forever home. So. Yeah. I mean, and you can always do, you can always enroll on online classes if you have right. any, if you have a specific interest and you just want to look into something, yes. and I mean, that's what I would tell my son. Hey, if you have an interest in something, just Google it. See if right. they have any, you know, introductory classes that you'd like to enroll in. And he's only 10 and he's only 11. Sure. sure. I almost forgot how old he was, but um, he's, you know, I would say, hey, if you have any interest in something, let's just get you into like, you know, an online course. I mean, so it's, kids are getting into things as early as seven or five these days, you know, and that right. kind of gives them uh, an outlook, you know, and it's, it's incredible what kids are, are, are coming out with now. I mean, there are kids that are, that are beginning their, that are, they're beginning to create video games and, you know, all sorts of different, really cool stuff, you know, technology right. wise. So, you know, big kudos to those parents who are really encouraging their children, you know, to go that extra mile. So bravo and kudos to them. Yeah. And, you know, I, I guess in a way with all the choices, it's confusing. You know, yeah. I'm a little older and there wasn't many, you know, choices when I was growing up and even for my parents before me, even less options. So I guess maybe the stress is also involved and there's like so many things. What do I, you know, but it, it comes down to maybe meditating and do some soul searching and like what yeah. really makes me happy. Right. That right. can also make me money. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so getting back to your studio, when exactly did you like start it? Uh, I opened up in 2018. I'd like to say, yeah, it was 2018. Uh, it was up and running. And um, I remember when I first opened up, I, we have like a, a, a face in the development, they have like a Facebook group and, you know, I said, Hey, I'm new, you know? Um, so I was just wondering if anybody had an interest, uh, I'm going to offer a, an open house um, and, you're welcome to come in and free class, you know, everybody was on, you know, everybody was so hyped and everybody was psyched and yeah, yeah, can I come and can I come? I'm like, sure, you know, I mean, I'm an open book. So what you see is what you get. Um, the way you see me here is, you know, what you'll get when you come into my studio. So, you know, when I opened the studio, 
I opened it from, from my home, you know? So it, it's just, it's a, it's a real intimate setting. And it's one of those settings where it's non-judgmental. And if you set yourself up in the back of the room and you just sit in child's pose throughout the entire class, guess what? You do you. You know, this is how your body's feeling. This is how you're feeling. Right. But you, at least you got on your mat today. You know, just the fact that you came out, the fact that you just left your house or left your job after a real bonkers day and, you know, you just came out and you just, you just came into the studio and you're like, I really need this today. But your body's like, I can't do this today. And you just sitting in child's pose all throughout the entire throughout the hour hey i won't say a word you know i'm i don't care not so, not like it not in a sense where i don't care no I, no yeah yeah like you said I'm you gonna, do you right yeah you do you because sometimes right. people go to 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 the gym right and they just show up because they feel like they need to show up whether it's to get out of their own heads and that is just so essential people need to get out and to get out of their own heads because even myself Although I work for myself and I work from home, I make sure I leave, I get out, you know, every so right. often because otherwise, you know, everybody will they'll, they'll kind of go crazy. Um, and we can go yeah. out now. So that's, we should do no, that while we but, can, because you never know right. what will be taken exactly. away from us. <laughs> that's correct. You're absolutely right with that. But I think that when you, when you know where you're going, when you know where you're safe, because I call this like, I call this a safe haven. So this space is not only intimate, but it's also a safe haven space it's also a play a, 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 excuse me a space where you can you can share your thoughts and you can share your feelings internally so you know when you when you come to class and maybe there's an intention that you want to set for yourself and then you make sure that that intention stays with you throughout the entire class and you take it back home and maybe you begin to feel something different you know from when you first came in right i mean there's just a whole it, the whole entire vibe is completely different. So, and that's, I think that's my message, you know, is that you, you do you. <laughs> you I know, like that, it's short and sweet. Easy yeah. For people I mean, to think about too. And, yeah. you know, and they may need to do that. Like if they've never done yoga before the first class, they may not be able to do much, but you know, every class, maybe they have some progress or if they've had a bad day, you know, they may regress to the corner um, it, but it doesn't matter. Okay. Nobody's nobody's okay. going to give them a, a hold up and say 10 or a seven. <laughs> no, absolutely. If you put yourself in a corner, that means you need it to be there, right. you know, but I'm not going to judge you for being in a corner. You know, if anything, I would say, hey, why don't you, you know, sit closer a little to me? Right. Because I'd like to just, you know, see what you're up to, you know, right. Um, and just make sure that you're in a space where you're feeling comfortable, that you're not feeling intimidated, or if you think that you're feeling, you know, judged, or you know, just don't look at the other person that's on your mat right. doing something else, or maybe that you're not comfortable doing in your own body. Take care of your own body and try not to see what this person is doing on their mat. And right. that's my message as well. So you know, steer clear of what ups. I what I like to say is this one person's medicine might be another person's poison okay and that's what one of my mentors um i heard one of my mentors saying i thought that was that was amazing you right know? um so what one person might be doing on their mat might be medicinal for them but what might be what might be medicinal for them might not be medicinal for you right so just you know stay away from what this person is doing and just concentrate and focus on what you're doing Right. Like you said, you do you. I mean, yeah. that that is like that explains a lot of things. So you talk about the space. How many people are in each class if you if you had every class maxed out? So um, at first I was I had about eight people. Sometimes I could squeeze in nine. But now to the wonderful world that we're living in of COVID, um, in order for my students to feel that they're safe and to feel that I can create a more safer environment. I do allow six people in the studio and they'll have to be spread out. So 
I just want to make sure that they're comfortable in coming in and saying, okay, so I'll feel more comfortable if I'm over there. Um, besides when you sign up online, you're also assigned spots. So you'll see me on the spot. And then there are a couple of other spots as you'll be able to see spot one through spot six. So each student will be able to see what spot another student has been assigned to or they'll be able to assign themselves. And if there's one spot left and, you know, all the spots are taken, I'm sorry, there's not much I can do. You know, I right. can't kick another student out of its spots. Out of his but spot. you have different times, though. Why don't you tell everybody the, the options that they have? Right. So there are it's mostly evening classes i just started a beginners class um this past monday and so i open the studio around 3 3 30 sometimes if the students want to come in and they just want to chit chat real quick or have any questions because that's what i really like to do because i like to chit chat you know before the classes start um and after so i i want to give people a chance to to talk to to say whatever they, it is that they want to say i don't care if they're just telling me about their family or about their job it's how they're feeling i'm i'm good with it you know i'm like their yoga slash uh you know physical uh, not physical but you know therapist so um i'm cool with whatever it is that they have to say um as long as it's not politics <laughs> I, that's not something i really wanted that i tolerate in here in this space you know yes um but yeah so and then there are certain times there are certain days where i offer different classes different um different evenings so yeah they'll have to kind of just see what class resonates with them what class suits them what class they're comfortable in practicing um also i'm always up for you know um suggestions so if there's a class on there there they that's a student does not see and says, hey, you know, will you be having this class or will you be putting this class or a class on the on your schedule? Uh, maybe can you think about doing that? I'm always open to suggestions. I'm also starting a power yoga class in November, coming November. Um, it's funny because a couple of years ago, I would have never gotten into power yoga, but I feel the benefits in my body when i when i'm practicing power yoga and i absolutely love it uh, and i think that this class this class in particular is for basically intermediates um and maybe a little advanced practitioners who really know yoga um but there are classes who are for beginners and there are classes that are for people who are not really familiar oh there's a great class that for for um beginner meditators and I like to call it like um, the beginner monkey mind, beginner's monkey mind, you know? So if you're not very familiar, it's not a very long class. It's about a half an hour. I do like a little introduction. And, um, you know, I just, just kind of walk you through it. And then we get up and we'll move around because the body tends to get stiff after you're sitting on your mat for a length of time. Mm -hmm. um, that's why it's just the beginning. You know, it's about a half an hour. Um, yeah. So, wow, that's great. Well, how can people uh, find you? Uh, they can find me on um, Facebook as well, but they can find me um, at uh, www um, at uh, udgyoga dot com, and I have a Facebook group and I have an Instagram. Um, so if they just go to your website, they will find the other ways to to connect with you. Absolutely. That's probably the best way. Sure, I'll sure. put the link in the description. That sounds good. Well, thank you for taking the time to talk with me today. Oh, well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. This was fun. Well, you have a great day and I look forward to hearing um, all the latest news and, and the new stuff that you're going to be doing. Keep us up to date. I, I will. There's a lot. I'm sure there's a lot that's going to be coming in too. So I'll awesome. keep you updated. Yep. Thank you very much. Have a great day, Ella. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye.